866-675-6775. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guests, Tanner Helm from West. Welcome. Good morning. Thanks for having me. And repeat offender, Sean Mill is in the house. Welcome. Good morning. Glad to have you with us as well. And let me remind you, if you ever have any home or finance related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. While I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan, a plan to save you money, I personally deal with you. I'll get that working for you right away. Just remember, leave your number, get this in your phone, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. And yes, of course, we are celebrating today. Uh, well, we know that uh, this weekend was heavy on the Beano, for those of you that enjoy the corned beef and cabbage. Uh, maybe a little bit of some of those morning after coconut water for those of you that enjoy the green beer I have a few other goodies in there but uh, today we're gonna go a little Italian national ravioli day today so uh, you know having beaten anorexia I'll go with that ravioli anytime that we can I it looks looks good to me I'll look over to wise guys this afternoon maybe I'll might have a little ravioli there the Dow Jones industrial average eh, it's flat up 28 points. Oil down 44 cents a barrel. 48.34 a bar barrel right now is our oil price. What is that doing to you and me? Well, I know I filled up this weekend and didn't see a whole lot of great stuff on the on the gasoline front. Of course, I use a Costco. It's a little bit cheaper than some of the other gases. So I'll go over there. 229.2 is the national average for a tank of gas. Right here in the state of confusion, we're at $2.99.3. Yes, that's because we've got about 20-some percent in state taxes. That way Jerry can waste more money. He has, to, he has to waste a little bit for us. That's just his way of doing things. Ten-year treasury falling. That's uh, going to be good for mortgage rates. 2.475 is the U.S. 10-year treasury this morning. Down a little over six one hundredths of a percentage. Now, you and I both know that the 10-year treasury does not drive mortgage rates, but it will have some effect. The mortgage-backed securities will follow there a little bit. The biggest issue that's going to affect mortgage rates, I know that some people are not going to be happy about me saying it this way, but one of the big issues of, of mortgage rates and I've talked to several owners of mortgage companies. Here's where they, what a lot of them will tell you, off the record, of course, almost one full percentage point of your interest rate, one full percentage point of your interest rate is compliance and risk factor just from the Dodd-Frank Act, one percentage of interest rate. So we'll see if they get some moderation there if we get any better interest rates, but that's just a little bit of the, the news for you right there. I was looking at this report this morning. This was an interesting report that came out, and I was really, I, I, I expected that my friend Sean would be on this report here. It was the Forbes list of billionaires. <laughs> I thought that I'd find you on there, Sean. I only got through the first five people, and I didn't see you there, but... So must, something must, they must have missed something in this report here, but we'll, we'll hit those because there's, a, there's some interesting numbers. Bill Gates, four years in a row and the majority of the last 18 years, he's been right there at number one. Warren Buffett, number two. Jeff Bezos, up $28 billion last year. wonder if he paid taxes. Just a thought. But he's number three. 
Amancio Ortega is number four, and rounding out the top five is Mark Zuckerberg. Interesting list of folks right there. Uh, and then I, I had to get this story in this morning. I, I love this one. Just because I'm almost a 30-year guy, so <laughs> you got to love it. So did you watch the news, Ghanaian play, uh, soccer player, he called, they call themselves footballers, Mohamed Anas. Well, I guess in soccer you don't use your hands, but I think he had the wrong place to put his foot this time. After a recent game, he went on stage and thanked his wife and his girlfriend. <laughs> now, if they were both watching, he might have also been looking to engage a new attorney, but that's just a different story. Although, I don't know, in Ghana, maybe they have a different set of rules over there, but I know what would happen here if... Uh, Sean, you're a football coach, right? I mean, Yes, sir. So... The high school, though. So, so you don't have too many players that are married, I would assume. <laughs> no, no, just, not so, yet. So what do you think would happen to a football player here thanking their wife and their girlfriend on national TV? Well, I know what would happen to me if I did. <laughs> so uh, I can only imagine. Yeah, I think the word that comes to mind is Lorena Bobbitt. But I'm just saying, I don't know. Well, <laughs> the cause a little trouble there. Moving right along. I don't understand this one. I wonder how this continues to happen. Now, their ESPN is reporting this morning that Tom Brady's stolen jersey from the Super Bowl has been found. Now, the part that it was stolen at the Super Bowl, okay, I can understand that. It was found in Mexico. And the part that baffles me is apparently it was an international reporter that stole it. But the guy's done this before. How does he keep his credentials? I, I, I'm just curious as to how the, you know, isn't there something in football, you know, if you're, you're a multi-time offender, you don't get to keep the credentials? I hope he doesn't get a press pass for the White House. I mean, a lot of people are breaking in there as it is. But this could be a little bit of problematic if they have the same level of scrutiny as they do for the NFL. Just a simple thought there. And we're seeing news now. Philadelphia is in the news. Are you ready for this one? They're canceling their Cinco de Mayo celebration. You gotta love it. I mean, they're canceling. I shared this with you before, especially living here in the state of confusion. I thought it was very interesting how some of the criminal illegal aliens would go and get a driver's license. Doesn't that create a registry of where you live, which could at some point under a different administration be problematic? Well, in Philadelphia, they figured that there might be a few illegals there, maybe some of the criminals that, the, that ICE has been looking for, so they're canceling their Cinco de Mayo celebration. They think that maybe it could be a problem there for some individuals who may get swept up where they shouldn't be. Just a thought. I, I wonder if some of these different organizations, I, I wondered how long it would take for something like this to happen. Now, you can have your thoughts about illegal immigration. You can you can want to change the rules. You know that's that's certainly the way of our country. If you don't like the rules, change them legally. But you wonder at some point in time where you have some of the organizations that are just saying, "I'm not going to follow the rules." You start wondering. I wonder if they realize that there are law enforcement agencies out there that are going to say, "Okay, well, you might want to change them," and until they're done, we're still just enforcing the law. Just a thought right there. Maybe it's going to happen. Maybe Philadelphia might be the leader of this revolution or this process. Just a thought. I wouldn't want to see. You know, and and I, I've shared this before. I've had some immigration attorneys come in here and chat on the broadcast. So don't tell me that I have no sympathy. I did have a young lady that worked for us many, many years ago that we did help get her citizenship for this country. So you know, it's not a matter of of not wanting to act, because I get some people online that tell me, well, you just hate illegal immigrants. No, I just kind of believe in the law of the land, whether we, regardless of whether you like it or not. You know, I must admit, when I was younger, I probably drank a little more than I should have. Might not have liked the laws that applied to driving and drinking at the time, but, you know, they are the laws. You got to follow them either way. That's just the way our society works. So there are legal ways of making these changes. Just just a simple thought there. 
We are watching the news coming out of Washington this morning. Media is having some troubles out there in Washington right now just because they can't figure out are they going to cover Comey? Are they going to cover Gorsuch? Are they going to cover the president? Everybody wants to be on TV today. Why don't C-SPAN, I think that's the name of the company. Maybe they'll be able to get them all right there on C-SPAN. Although I did notice that PBS and National Public Radio, eh, they're probably going to lose some funding. Is that a problem? We'll see. The thought here is, I know when they talked about, what is it, uh, PBS, they, they couldn't lose their funding because of Sesame Street until they sold Sesame Street to HBO, and I wonder what that meant for the, the total industry. Just a thought right there. And Disney in the news as well this morning. We're looking at Disney. Stock is going up because of Beauty and the Beast. Think about that one. So I guess they can't blame the entire market on ESPN's lagging performance any longer, being that Beauty and the Beast seems to be carrying them. Just a thought. A lot of stuff going on this morning. We're going to get to it, though. When we come back, you're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, four great reasons to buy real estate this spring. What is a reverse mortgage? Ten tips for doing Whole30 on a budget. Obviously, I have not done Whole30 for those of you that understand it. Social media. We only got a president now because of social media. We're going to talk to Tanner about social media. And what is title insurance? Who needs it? Why do we want it? Let's get some education for people. You can reach us anytime. Call the off-air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, shame on you. The replay is available, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. In the middle of our Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Or complete a three-minute complimentary survey and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. What if your family business could help clothe a less fortunate family? Or your restaurant could feed truly hungry people? What if you could help to comfort the lonely? Plant sustainable resources where nothing has ever grown before. Or make a child's lifelong wish come true. What if all you had to do was simply do nothing more than what your business already does every day? Would you do it? Introducing Processing for a Cause. A unique program that turns a percentage of your business's credit card volume into ongoing donation dollars for nonprofit organizations and foundations. Simply switch your credit card processing provider to Processing for a Cause and begin supporting a worthy cause today. The process is simple and the cause will change lives forever. Processing for a Cause. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject exchange without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 0186945. Are you a veteran, police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, or refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission, lending partners will give a credit at closing, the title company has special published rates, and many other service providers have incentives too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. 
Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio. Or any time at 800 306 1990 in the Word on Wealth segment today, being brought to you by Gold Star Mortgage. When you're ready for that next mortgage, any kind of a mortgage, Gold Star has the programs for you. 10 tips for doing Whole30 on a budget. Now, those of you that may be a little bit beyond the New Year's resolution portion of the year, getting healthy, and maybe it's uh, summer's almost here. I used to go to a spin class, and that was the instructor's I know, I know. Those of you watching on Ron Siegel Radio are laughing. Sean's even laughing over here. Ron in a spin class, right? <laughs> Go ahead, Sean. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll pay to see that. <laughs> exactly. But the instructor used to say, you know, summer's coming. So we'll say summer's coming right here as well. So you might be looking to lose a little bit of weight before summer. And this Whole30 thing apparently is one of the hotter diets out there. So how do you do it on a budget? Number one, don't worry about going organic. After all, you want to cut out all the nastiness from the food you put in your body, but if you can't afford organic meat, fruit, veggies, don't sweat it. Consider just purchasing organic if your produce is on the dirty dozen list of foods most impacted by pesticides. Get familiar with best prices. Keep emergency snacks on hand. Yeah, like a Hershey bar. <laughs> Plan your meals. Don't be afraid of the freezer aisle. Try some canned foods. Choose conventional lean meats. Get used to making eggs. Skip expensive whole 30 fied products. Uh, keep it simple. That's my idea. Keep it simple. I can, I can do that. Right? <laughs> Obviously, the rest of the diet part, I don't do very well. And I know my wife's watching this morning, so thank goodness she's not here telling everybody that, yeah, he doesn't do it very well. He's tubbo. Ah, that's the end of the Word on Wealth segment. Again, brought to you by Gold Star Mortgage. So one of the things that almost any business has probably noticed, actually anybody in America, maybe anybody in the world, social media, it is the tool of the decade now. Changing, really changing a lot of the world. When you think about this, the concept being the president of the United States became president because of social media. No one really knew who he was. He wasn't getting a lot of the coverage. If it wasn't for social media, I don't think he would be where he is. So let's talk social media with Tanner. Tanner, were you one of the... Uh one of the architects of the president's social media campaign? <laughs> no, no, definitely not one of the architects. <laughs> but uh, it does, if anything, it proves how powerful it can be. Absolutely. So as a small business owner, what do we need? Give us some, some tips on, you know, because so many people either are small business. That's, a, that's the foundation of America. Yeah. Right? So as a small business owner, what do we need to know? What... What should we do? Obviously, we know some of the things the president's showing us that we shouldn't do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there's a couple things that I try to keep in mind when, whenever I'm talking to small business owners or, or anybody really looking to approach social media. And the first thing is that um, get over this mindset that it's this big daunting task, especially when it comes to applying it to your business. Social media is simply just a, a fancy term for how we as a people communicate now. It's just communication. Um, so I think if you realize that early on, then it makes it a little bit easier to go on there and just realize you're just having conversations with people. Now, whether that's prospective clients or friends and family and loved ones, it's all just communication and it just looks different today. So part of the, the issue that I have with that is it, it's communication. We know that there's two different issues though. Number one is is it a good way of communicating? Because, I mean, in a text message, you know, I can tell Sean that he's an SOB and we're friends. Right, right. right? And if I say it with a smile on my face, he knows that I'm not serious, I'm not angry with him. <laughs> but if it just comes across as a written word, you know, it's all in where he's taking it from as opposed to maybe what I mean it by. So how do you deal with that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... 
good, bad, indifferent. I don't really know if it's a if it's a good form of communication, quote unquote. But I think that at the end of the day, it is what it is. I mean, it's here. We can't really fight it. Uh, major companies have proven that if you're not adapting to technology, you'll just go straight out of business. So whether you like it or not, I mean, people didn't like when Elvis shook his hips. You know, I mean, sure. it's like things are changing. And now look, it's not a moral discussion or anything, but it's just one of those things. It's changing. If you don't adapt to it, then uh, I think it's drastically going to hurt your business. And so I, I understand what you're saying. Where written communication that can be, you know, there's no tone. It can be miscommunication communicated things like that all the more reason to dive into it and learn how to communicate well I mean there's grown men now that send emojis because it's 2017 and that's what we do right so, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was pretty surprised when I got that emoji from Sean <laughs> <laughs> it was the poop but one it, huh <laughs> yeah, it was either that one or it was some some hand signals I don't know what, what it was all about <laughs> but it is kind of it's it, that's an interesting concept now do you suggest people go have, having multiple individuals reviewing them before they go out, or is it just get it out there quickly and, and recover later? As far as content being pushed out? Content, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a speed guy, definitely. I think that the quicker you can get things out, the quicker you can adapt and change, the better. Um, as long as you have the, the self-awareness to audit what's coming back in, right? So um, you push stuff out. I do it all the time. I'll push out a photo, a video, a, you know, a, a live video, something else. And at the end of the week or at the end of the day, I take a look at the response that came in. Where did people react positively? Where did people react negatively? And then I move that direction. And then two days from now, it might be completely different. Live video worked great last week. Maybe it didn't work this week, but I just, I don't fall in love with one method or, or one piece of content. I just kind of push and then audit back what comes in. That's a pretty interesting concept right there because business owners, I think, miss that last part. Yeah. Is they're out there talking, right? but they're not measuring and calculating. I mean, almost everything, right? I mean, in my industry, in the, in the radio, we want to know what our audience size is. In the mortgage world, we want to know how many people did you speak to to get a, a loan or, or a realtor, how many people saw a house before it sells. They forget about the audit side that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'm not overly uh, meticulous about auditing how many likes or followers or whatever it may be, but more just audience response. Because whether it's one person or 100 people liking my post, if that one person turned into a sale or a new client, that's better than 100 people liking it and nobody, you know, no conversations happening. So going back to communication, I, I audit not necessarily the numbers or the or the stats. I audit what my audience is feeling. Are they engaging with me? And did I did my post generate three, four, ten? new conversations or did it just sit there and go flat so I put up almost every morning I put a motivational quote I see my friend Jim is online here as well I see some things from him also uh, in the afternoons I put up a, a wine meme of some sort yeah I'll put on jokes throughout the day those tend to get a lot of, of conversation and and response yeah is that does that mean meaningful for my business? Does it help in the algorithms that are going out there? How does that affect? Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely meaningful for your business. If you could say, you know, I, I posted a video last week. I got 60 or 70 comments on it. Um, you know, I obviously did it all digitally from my mobile device. If you said, hey, could you go out and have 70 conversations today? Is that a positive, you know, action for your business? Of course it is. We're in the people business and most people are in the people business. So if you can go interact with more people on a daily basis, then that's definitely going to be positive on one end, just on sheer volume and on the other end people you know forever people have always said oh they'll do business with people they know like and trust right sure. so if you can get out there show your personality generate engagement with people there's going to be more people that know like and trust you so it's just another method of, of communicating it's kind of like the it's a it's an interactive billboard, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know, and like you know, back to what I said in the beginning, it's it's really just communication. It's not. It's done differently, but uh, it's an opportunity for you to go out and and everything you push out or every interaction you have is is uh, is like you said, a, a billboard for your brand, essentially. So, if it's communication. You know, those people in sales, I'll use Sean for an example here, yeah. right? So Sean's business is he needs to go out all day long and be talking to people to be successful in what he does, Yeah. right? So, but if he were sitting in his office on Twitter or on Facebook all day, management may not like that as much. Right. So how much time, what's the time breakdown that we should be 
looking at? Yeah, I, I, that's a really good question. I think it's it's different for, for everybody, obviously. I also think we overthink it. So first thing is that uh, whenever I talk to salespeople about social media, I make sure they understand this is a revenue producing activity. So if you said, hey, you need to sit on the phone for three hours and cold call people, everybody would assume in a sales world that's a good activity. If you convert zero people, then that's a waste of three hours, right? Right. So on social media, if you treat it like a revenue producing activity, then you can go on. You can, whether it's five minutes or 50 minutes, it's a good use of time if it's producing revenue. The other thing is I think people really overthink what they need to do on social media. I mean, it's it's not really a time factor. I walked in here and in 10 seconds, I posted three things on Instagram and a post on Facebook. And I don't, you know, either, neither one of you might've even noticed that I did it, but it's just a time thing. You know, you're walking from your car to the office, you shoot a video of yourself, letting people know what you're doing. It's documenting your day that's important, not creating this great social media content. So what your thoughts about these different aggregation programs, the buffers and the hoot suites and some yeah. of those different programs like that, deliver it? Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan. I mean, as far as the scheduling goes, that's fine as long as it's still personal content. But when it comes to um, these programs that just distribute generic content for you on a regular basis, I'm not a big fan because it eliminates everything we're trying to do on social media in a sense of being authentic, genuine, letting people see your personality. If it's scheduling, then that's time effective and I get that. Um, but if it's just distributing generic content, I, I, you know, I think it's a waste of time. I think that it's stuff that's not going to get very much engagement and it's a lazy way for people to say they're doing social media. I like that idea because I see this one <laughs> this thing one that drives me nuts is I think it's called recur post. Mm -hmm. You didn't hear this the first time so I'm going to repeat myself. Right. I mean it's like it's like nagging. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't want to hear it over and over again. Yeah. And I mean, it's the same thing. You see these, you know, platforms that, that realtors use often and they say, you know, which backsplash looks better in this kitchen? Nobody cares. Right. You know? <laughs> Nobody cares which backsplash. And so it's one of those things where it, it's, if it's going out just to say it's going out. It's not doing anything for you. That makes sense. And I think Tanner will agree with this. You get more... Uh, engagement with folks when you show them who you really are. I bet you he gets more, I bet you he got more likes on the picture of his daughter yesterday yeah. <laughs> than he does on uh, promoting uh, anything else. Yeah. People want to see who you are. So you're saying that they don't want to see Tanner. Right, right. My daughter's way <laughs> cuter than I am. <laughs> there, there's, a, there's a realtor sure. here in Anaheim Hills who is killing it and he puts on his Facebook every week a daddy daughter. Uh, I think it's Tuesday, mm -hmm. and he's killing it now. People come up to him in the grocery store and say, "Hey, I." It's like the old bus bench or the old sure. ad on the uh, on the on the shopping cart. But people recognize you from social media now, and they recognize him not because he's saying, "Hey, buy this house, buy this house," but because here I am with my daughter, and oh yeah, I'm a realtor. Goes back to what Tanner said earlier, is they get to know and like somebody, and they trust him. You know, if he's hanging out with his daughter, I like hanging out with, well, I don't have a daughter, but I mean, if some people might say, he's hanging out with his daughter having fun, I like hanging out with my kids having fun, you know, we must be have some things in common. Right. Great right. information, you're listening to Ron Siegel Radio. We're gonna continue our conversation with Sean Mill and Tanner Hill when we come back. We will also chat about four great reasons to buy real estate this spring and what is a reverse mortgage going right from the very basic standpoint. You can reach us anytime, our off-air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1, Ron Siegel the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned, we'll be back in just a few. Siegel Lending Team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest, of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home. You're missing out on by waiting. 
That's power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details, 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal housing lender, licensed under NMLS number 217037. Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 35 and if you can believe it, 7-year interest only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal Housing Lender. Do you own real estate or have assets over $150,000? Do you know one of your heirs will be the probate courts and the IRS? If you don't have a living trust, you will go through probate. Call Heritage Financial Services toll-free at 1-855-434-7400 for a free review. Check us out on Facebook, Heritage Financial Service in Lake Forest, California. That's 1-855-434-7400. Again, 1-855-434-7400. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. The Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by AskAboutReverseMortgages.com. Are you 62 years of age or older? Have some equity in your property? Maybe you want to buy a new house? The reverse mortgage might be the right solution for you. I'm a big, big believer that there is no such thing as a bad mortgage product. There is and has been bad applications of mortgage products. They haven't been used properly. So that could be the case that and in the case of the reverse mortgage, most people just don't understand the product because it's one of the more misunderstood programs out there. So what is a reverse mortgage? It is nothing more than a loan on a home, loan secured by a piece of real estate, real property. Just like any kind of a mortgage, same thing. The bank does not own your home. They have a lien on the home. The bank does not want your home. It is geared for, for our seniors age 62 or over. It is geared to be a primary residence. It's not an investment property. It's not a second home. Although you could have a duplex or triplex with a reverse mortgage as long as you are living in one of the units. There are several types of reverse mortgages. There are fixed rate mortgages. There are adjustable rate mortgages. And by definition, since every one of our seniors lived during the 80s, there's not a reason to be afraid of the adjustable rate. It's actually a better product for you. There are a lot more options for you. You can actually save some tax money by using the adjustable rate mortgage. That's just a one of the benefits. There is some concern about costs. They can be expensive if you use the right people. They can be free. I've just uh, saw like two or three of them we just finished where pe- listeners had called in. Their reverse mortgage cost them absolutely nothing. They were even reimbursed for the cost of the appraisal. So if it costs you nothing, is that too expensive? Just a thought there. The bottom line here 
is get educated. Don't talk to your neighbors. They probably don't understand the changes that happened in the program in the last 90 days. They don't understand the changes that are on the drawing board for the program. So think about those different concepts. Give me a call. I'll, I'll let you know about them. And if it makes sense for you, I'll put you in touch with our friend Jay Kaplan. He is a great resource for the reverse mortgage and go get a little education ask about reversemortgages.com they've got some of that information right there so we've been chatting this morning sean mill from wfg title is here tanner helm from west is here we're talking social media so sean let's let's talk a little further on the idea of social media when it comes to real estate and i know that the title industry is unbelievably regulated in, in many of the industries, I mean, the realtors, apparently the realtors have the most money, right? Because they're, they don't have all the compliance that the title guys do. They don't have the compliance in the CFPB that the lending guys do. So they must have a better lobby so they can get, a, get around these things. Well, they actually do. They probably have the most powerful lobby in Sacramento. The, the realtors lobby is very powerful. Absolutely. Very powerful. So are you able to help educate our, our population, our, our society, through the use of social media on what title insurance is? Is that allowed? Yeah, you can always, I mean, one of the things that we are allowed to do uh, as, as uh, sales reps these days, we, we don't bring donuts and we don't take them to Lakers <laughs> games anymore, but we can educate. <laughs> and uh, we use, I, I use my, my Facebook, my personal Facebook account, we'll, we'll push out content, uh, kind of just giving the, uh, community at whole uh, information about what's going on in the title industry uh, but that's one of the things that we can do now is as reps is I help bring value to my clients by helping them understand social media uh, through my use most folks most people that we deal with um, are a little older and they think oh social media is for kids uh, but go to Starbucks and look who's in there and their baby boomers and and older folks that are checking their Facebook page sure and so are you checking your junk mail at home or but you're checking your Facebook page and I think it's probably the the d dollar for dollar uh, to spend money on on using Facebook to promote your business or other forms of social media is much more effective these days than doing uh, bulk mailing. Uh, most people open their mailbox and see something, they usually toss it, but everybody is checking to see whether, uh, you know, Mandy or Tommy like their, uh, their right. Facebook. Yeah, how many friends do you have right. and how many likes did I get on that post? And yeah. it's sad as I, I talked to my, my 17 year old daughter and, and basically social status amongst teens today is based on how many likes you have or how many friends you have. <laughs> well, it's not that much different for for us. And, and, and it, you know, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I know it's a thing. Sure. <laughs> and I know that uh, folks who don't get on this train are going to be left behind. As you said, we elected a president basically uh, because of social media. Sure. He was able to say things and, and reach people that he wouldn't have otherwise. Same thing goes for us in our business is that there's no way I can go out and talk to 700 people today. To but, work. Right. But I can send out, I can put something on Facebook and reach that many and then some. So as Tanner was saying before, is it actually, is it a waste of time? Some people would see it as a waste of time, but a waste of time is going to, for me to make sales calls to 50, to 50 real estate offices and maybe see 10 realtors. Sure. And, and I do that still. It's just social media. So you're having to come up with a balancing act. Right. right. And, and, and the thing is, is we shouldn't um, base our whole entire strategy on social media, it has to be a layer. It's like an onion. It's it's one of the things we're doing. We're using social media. We're still out. I, I believe that boots on the ground is still one of the most effective ways to do your business. But you have that social media has to be part of the. So are you trying to sell on social media, or are you just trying to build relationships, or is it a both? Both. I I don't. I don't think uh, I don't use social media to, to like buy toasts. Don't buy title insurance from me. I'm selling me. Okay, I'm, so you're letting I, people get to yeah, know you. I'm selling me 
And I believe, and it comes down to if, if people like you, they're going to do business with you. Um, if they don't like you, it doesn't matter how great your product is. If they don't like you, sure. they're not going to buy it. That makes sense. So what are you seeing, Tanner, out there? Is it is Are people... Do you think we're getting to the day where you know Starbucks is going to put up, or, or um, like today? Today I saw on the news that for some reason I don't know why they do it, but Rita's gives away ice cream the day like this date every year. Yeah. Do you start thinking we're just seeing coupons going on social media? Yeah, I mean, I, well, one, I think that's already happening. Okay. Um, yeah, so I don't think it's like something... So it's not a problem. We, we, so yeah. it's something we need to be doing then. Right, yeah, I think so. And it's just, it's such a fine line between what you're truly selling when you're on social media. Um, I think it's, I think like Sean was saying, you're selling yourself, um, you're selling the value you bring as far as uh, whether that's knowledge, whether that's humor, motivation. I mean, value comes in a lot of different forms, but uh, you're really selling that. I mean, some of the top organizations in the world that used to do hardcore sales training, objection handling, all that stuff, they've switched their entire training program over to a term they're using called social selling, which is really this term that, that talks about pushing out content on your product or your company or the value that your service brings, pushing out content on that and then building relationships through your network, through social selling, and then in turn, you're actually selling your product. And so I don't think it, you know, what I always tell people is it's marketing or social media is fuel on an existing sales fire. It's not going to make up for everything you have to do. It's not the magic pill to your business, but it is super important in today's world. I like the way you put that because a lot of people are thinking that, well, if I can just build up my social media, I don't have to go, as Sean said, and put the boots out there and talk to people. I can just sit there and, and tweet all day yeah. and... I'm going to get my bit my my business gone. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, there's a fine line because on the other side of that coin, brand really does matter, right? I mean, we were just talking about, you know, at the break here buying a new computer without even thinking twice, I'm going to Mac because when I think computer, I think laptop, I think Mac. Not because somebody cold called me yesterday and say, "Hey, are you in the market for a new computer? You know, come by and see our new Mac." It's brand. It's why we wear Nike. It's why we wear shirts from Nordstrom or whatever it may be. Um, so I think that's something to, to take into consideration too of building a true brand through your social media where it's second nature for when people think mortgage or real estate or CPA or whatever you do that they think you. That's an interesting point is because you can do a lot of branding, especially with the advertising. I mean, we used to do a something called the so, uh, Facebook ads that suck. Yeah. Right? That was something five years ago, six years ago. It's probably not going to work anymore. No, there's still a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was basically just an ad on the side with your, your picture and saying, you know, you didn't want a good call to action because you didn't want anybody to click and you didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> right? Yeah. That was that was the strategy at the time. Yeah. It, right? But I also think we, we can't just pitch and... Just, pigeonhole ourselves into just Facebook. We have to educate ourselves as to all the forms of social sure. media. Like yeah. uh, Yelp. Yelp, for one. I talk to a lot of realtors. Do you have a Yelp page? They're like, they're afraid that they're going to get negative feedback on there. But did you know, I didn't realize this, but there's like this whole subculture of folks that they do everything on Yelp. Yelpers. If you're not if you're not on Yelp, they're not going to your restaurant. If you're not they, they when they go to a restaurant they Yelp it, when they go to a store they Yelp it, when they buy a house they Yelp it. I didn't think about buying a house with it, but I know my wife is constantly looking if we're looking at a new restaurant or we're in a neighborhood or something. We found a restaurant on the way back from Paso Robles last time just because it was on Yelp and it, yeah. we would never have gone into this neighborhood, we would have never gone into this restaurant. But it was fantastic. But if you're not, if you're a realtor, why would you not want to take yet another chance to have your name seen? Uh, you know, again, it's brand. There's, you have to educate. I think we kind of get stuck in, like we always talk social media. Everybody automatically thinks Facebook sure. or, or Twitter. There are so many, so many. You don't have to know about all of them, but you probably should get educated. That's why a guy like Tanner, Tanner does know about all of them, <laughs> is that you know, he's able to, to educate me without me having to go and, and do all that. I know, because I was looking at your MySpace account, Sean. And it <laughs> <laughs> it's making a comeback. I, I, it's going to make a comeback here. And, and you know something that's kind of funny, because that, that is what's happening, is you know, we, we, we've heard that, and Tanner, you could probably speak to this after the break about a little bit about this, is the migration. You know, the young people are the ones that really made Facebook what it is. Yeah. Right? And then uh, mom and dad got on there and they said, adios, we're going to Snapchat. Yeah. And I can't even figure out Snapchat. My <laughs> wife is great at it. And I can't figure out that thing. But I noted I was sitting at a, a St. Patrick's Day party the other night. 
And so people were sitting there, like they must have been bored with the rest of us because they're sitting there playing with their phone <laughs> and laughing their heads off at these little faces they're making on yeah. there, right? So that's the that's the next wave. And you need somebody like Tanner who can really just keep you educated because old people like you and me, Sean, we don't we don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about more about this when we come back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. Four great reasons to buy real estate this spring. We'll talk about that when we get back as well. Remember, you can reach us anytime. Off air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. On Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1, Ron Siegel the numeral 1 on YouTube, or ronsegalradio.com, the archives. You can get the show there as well. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Isn't it time you found out the truth about FHA-insured home equity conversion? No, it's not your grandfather's reverse mortgage. This just may be the finest financial planning strategy available for all homeowners of retirement age. Helping protect what you've earned is the job of your board of directors with continued education. Major research has shown that using a HECM will significantly enhance the success rate of a retiree's portfolio and legacy. Please allow us to educate. For your complimentary consultation, call Jay Kaplan at 949-300-3855. That's 949 300 3855. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Siegel Lending Team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E. G-E-L LendingTeam.com or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? Here, the mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call the Ron Siegel Team at 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you a no-obligation real estate plan. You be the judge if this is right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to reap at ronsiegelradio.com or call today ron siegel 1-800-306-1990 that is 1-800-306-1990 great subject change and without notice licensed by the california doc and vre and mls 217037 and 145502 and cal vre 0186945 and 1866775 you're listening to ron siegel's home and finance show with local and national expert ron siegel Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio. Or anytime at 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. The real-time real estate segment today. 
Being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio, text NEST. N-E-S-T to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does. And obviously, you want to talk to our friends over at Gold Star Mortgage and get pre-approved, pre-underwritten so that you make no loan contingencies when you make that offer. Just a quick guide for you. Four great reasons to buy real estate this spring. Number one, prices will continue to rise. CoreLogic's latest home price index report that home prices have appreciated by 6.9% over the last 12 months. That same report is predicting that prices will continue to increase at a rate of 4.8% over the next year. The bottom in home prices has come and gone. Home values will continue to appreciate for years. Waiting does not make sense. Mortgage interest rates are projected to increase. Freddie Mac's mortgage mar primary mortgage market survey shows that interest rates for 30-year mortgage have remained around 4% over the last couple months. The Mortgage Bankers Association, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, National Association of Realtors, they all agree, projecting that rates will increase by at least a half a percent over, over the next year. And that's going to impact your monthly mortgage payment. Either way, you are paying a mortgage. Whether you buy a house or rent, you're paying a mortgage. It's either yours or somebody else's. And number four, it's time to move with on with your life. If you've been waiting for some reason, you need a bigger house, you need a different location, you need to right size, any of those reasons, don't wait. It's not going to be a better time next year at this time, I promise you. That is the Real Time Real Estate segment, again, brought to you by Nest. They are trusted real estate professionals. Text NEST to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else finds it. So we are chatting social media this morning. We're, we've got the guru in with us. Tanner Helm is here. And then we've got Sean, the application of the program. You thought I was going a different direction, didn't you, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, so here's what the reality is, and, and it's, it's great that we have Sean with us as well, is because Tanner's giving us the the concepts here, how we do this for business. Sean's out there on the street, and there's always a you know I'm a big believer. Like I went to college, a lot of people went to college, right? And I had some arguments with some of the professors at the school because I was already doing some of the things that they were teaching, and they're teaching things out of the book, and they don't work. And I'd get in trouble because I'd tell them, you know, I'm I'm out there on the street, that doesn't work, and you have to put the wrong information on the test to get a good grade, right? <laughs> So Tanner is here and he's telling us, okay, these are the things you need to do. Sean's out on the street saying, okay, these are the things that I am doing. And we're able to meld the two of them together to give you some great advice. That's our, our whole focus. So Tanner, do I have to know, I guess I have to know who I'm talking to to know where to talk? Yeah. Yeah, I mean exactly. So for me, I mean, for Sean, he's right. still using a telex, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, for my my son, he doesn't know that what a telex even is. <laughs> yeah, I think you know, as as a marketer and as a salesperson, it comes down to three things for me. And if you can do these three things, and you can sell well, whatever. Here's your the juice, is, guys. It's uh, you know, you got to say the right thing to the right people in the right context, right? If okay. you can do those three things, then you can share your message. And so, you know, yeah, like you were saying, if your audience is, you know, 15 to 18 year old females, you're selling a face wash product or something along those lines, Facebook's probably not gonna be the best spot for you. Uh, if your client like mine is, is, you know, 50 to 60 year old females or males for that matter that are real estate agents, Facebook's the spot, they're all over it, right? So that's why I focus most of my attention there. But it, it really does come down to knowing your audience and not just knowing your audience, but knowing your audience frame of mind when they're consuming content on their mobile device. Which is an interesting point because if you're doing, like in Sean's case, I'm just using you as an example all day today, Sean. <laughs> but, right, he's, so he's got one audience that is the real estate professional that you were just talking about, and that's the Facebook person that's probably 40 to 60. Right. But he's got another audience in his football career that they probably don't even want to know about his Facebook presence. They want to see him on Snapchat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you've got to match, you know, if you have multiple product lines, then you might want to be looking at, you know, what product line is, where's that audience at? Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, otherwise, you're, you know, you're talking to an empty room or you're talking to a room people that it doesn't apply to. So. Makes sense. Yeah. Is Twitter, is that going away? 
I mean, because you hear the mixed news. opinions. Yeah, really? in in my opinion, I think it is a little bit. But then, you know, I mean, we've talked about it with the president and everything else. You know, I mean, there's obviously still users on there. I think Twitter's big problem is they never implemented what Facebook did, where there's an algorithm to control you from what you're seeing basically so on twitter more so than any other platform you have people following 50 hundred thousand people you'd literally have to be scrolling through your feed 24 7 to see what everybody's posting so i think more people will go on there to uh you know make a funny comment about the reality tv show or talk about lebron's dunk or whatever it may be they'll be on there to do that but they're not actually consuming content on there they're out there pushing content but they're not consuming so if nobody's consuming it, I'm just talking to myself there. Pretty much. Just seeing who has the funniest, you know, quote on Twitter. So then it becomes <laughs> like, the, that's the the source. It's kind of like AP, right? Like the Associated Press, mm -hmm. right? They're putting out news and then NBC and ABC, they're all taking what they want of that. Right. And it's kind of what Twitter's doing is they're putting it out there. So Sean might take one thing, I might take another thing, and then we're going to put it onto the channels that we want to be on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think, you know, there is there is the other side, you know, again, I'm a big contradiction when it comes to this stuff. But on the other side of it, Twitter has one of the most robust search features out of any social platform at really? all. So if you want to jump into a conversation about what's going on on the radio this morning, you could go to twitter.com slash search. Type in, you know, local radio, and you can see every tweet that's happened since the beginning of time that mentioned local radio. So how do I learn that, though? How do I know? I mean, I'm on Twitter, and I didn't even know that until you just said it. Right. So, I mean, and most people don't, but I think in a, in a real-world application, what that allows you to do is, uh, you know, as a, as a real estate agent, for example, right? I go to search. I go to location. I pull up the city I'm in or the, uh, you know, the general area, and I search house hunting on well, Saturday morning, right? So I pull up everybody in, in La Habra and Anaheim that's, that tweeted about house hunting. There might be 50, 60 people on there, you know, 30 of them might be realtors tweeting some news article, whatever it may be, but you might have somebody that said, going out house hunting with the family this morning, and then, as an agent, you can go back and engage with those people and say, hope you find the right place. You know, you're not going to go sell them right away, but you can engage in a conversation. And that's what Twitter allows that I think most people forget, is that Twitter is a true water cooler, if you will. You can go jump into any conversation about any topic at any time and have real dialogue with people. And I think people, that's, that's the underutilized version of Twitter. Interesting information. If you want more information from Tanner, give me a call at 800-306-1990. I'll put you in touch. Need title insurance? Sean Mill is the man. I'll put you in touch with him as well. And be sure to set that first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to John, who's engineering us today. And of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime, 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money, help a lot of people, have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio.